Stay with the word part 34, introduction by Brother Miguel. We continue faith-free following the message of the Lord Jesus Christ, which has brought us through his angel messenger, William Soto Santiago, without deviating neither to the right nor to the left, we shall reach the place of joy of happiness that the Lord has promised us. In the message, the other side of the frontier, preached in 1985, thus it has been for 2,000 years approximately, the Spirit of God has been flying from the, earth, from the land of Israel, from the east, in the road to the west, passing through from passing from one frontier to another, passing from one nation to another, from one continent to the other, and passing from one messenger to another messenger, and from one people to another people. That's how it has been, the trajectory of the Spirit of God flying and closing each frontier from one age to another, crossing from one frontier, passing through a frontier in order to cross to another nation, to another continent, and also crossing the spiritual frontiers, passing through one frontier from one age to another, because uh, an age, the division of an age uh, between the two ages is a frontier, and the Spirit of God has passed from the frontier of one age to another and has changed the place and has changed the messenger through his flying from one frontier to, to another through crossing and traversing the frontier and for the reason of the preordained program in a divine way the spirit of God has been journeying flying from the east towards the west, just like the lightning which comes from the east and is seen in the west. That is the divine program. So therefore, the trajectory of the Spirit of God passing through different frontiers of different continents and different nations it has been a reality, that divine program, in the end time, in the end time, it has been a time of the last stage of the Gentile Church, the stage of the age of the Church of Laodicea, the stage in which the Spirit of God was manifesting himself in the seventh messenger who had the ministry in the virtue of Elijah manifested, that, spirit, that ministerial spirit manifested for the fourth occasion. That ministerial spirit had flew from, from the east and now we can read, we can see that he, that spirit is already found in the west, in the western continent, in the land of America, but in the northern part of the American continent. There, in North America, uh, the spirit of God dwelt, dwelt there and was manifested through that human flesh, that instrument who brought the message corresponding to that age, that message called the people, the people of that age, the people who corresponded to that stage of the construction of the spiritual temple of the Lord. Later, when he reached his final stage, still the northern, the northern American nation 
did not know the Spirit of God manifested in human flesh in the seventh angel messenger of the Gentile church with the ministry of Elijah manifested for the fourth occasion. The nation of America has not understood as a nation that she had the one of the greatest prophets who had who has stepped on this earth in the seven ages of the Gentile Church. They haven't understood the blessing and the great privilege which North America had. And when the time now passed North America as it passed each nation where the Spirit of God was manifested in each messenger corresponding for each age of the Gentile Church, the Spirit of God flew from North America as it had flown from the other nations and the other continents where the Spirit had been in the past ages because the Spirit of God does not stop. He continues onwards carrying out that divine program which was preordained and designed beforehand because that program is the great divine work that was announced through through his prophets of the past and also of the New Testament. Therefore, uh, the seventh messenger still being uh, in whom there was the spirit of Elijah manifested, he was already telling us uh, that spirit of Elijah was speaking through his messenger that he had already left the northern the, the, the nation of North America. And then the North American nation had been abandoned by the Spirit of God, though the messenger was still there in the messenger of the seventh age of the Gentile Church. He understood the hour in which he was living in, and him knowing that the Spirit of God had already finished his work in North America, he said, I can no longer pray for North America. He was very sad knowing that uh, being a North American and in his earthly body, now since he was a North American, he felt sad, knowing that the Spirit, the Divine Spirit, the Spirit of God, had already abandoned North America and was already preparing everything for a new place towards where he would go to carry out a great stage, a glorious stage of his program. Well, in the divine program was the construction of a new temple which uh, would be constructed according to the prophecy of Zachariah, of the prophet Zachariah. So therefore, after finishing that construction of the stage of the seventh age of the Gentile Church, in concluding the ministry of the seventh messenger in North America, where the final stage of the holy place of the spiritual temple of the Lord was constructed by the Lord 
through the seventh messenger. Then after that, only remained the construction of the most holy place. And thus, as he flew from one nation to another, he closed and closed the frontier which was between one nation and another. And thus also, the Spirit of God flew from North America and crossed the frontier for what? In order to continue the construction of the spiritual temple, of the spiritual temple of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the construction of the most important part of that temple, for the construction of the most holy place where uh, the ministry of the two cherubims updated will be put, which will be the ministry of the two olives and of the two candlesticks in the spiritual temple of the Lord Jesus Christ where the Lord Jesus Christ will put the Ark of the Covenant, where he will put the book which was opened in heaven and was brought to earth to be put in the temple of the Lord, in the most holy place of that temple. Uh, that book being so, being the law updated, because what was in the most holy place in the tablets of the law will be updated in our time, and it will be put in the most holy place of the spiritual temple of the Lord. And thus also, the manna will be updated, which was hidden in the most holy place of the temple, which Moses constructed, and also the temple that Solomon built. Here, in the temple which the Lord Jesus Christ uh, makes, which is the spiritual temple, he will put the hidden manna, the updated hidden manna, which will be the final message of the great voice of trumpet. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. <coughs> and upon the earth there is hunger, hunger, not hunger of bread and thirst, not of water, or of bread, but of hearing the word of God. The word of God will come in this time from the most holy place of the spiritual temple of the Lord in order to be given to the people as the manna, the hidden manna, as the word, the hidden word which was hidden from the past ages in the past dispensations. But it is given to the human beings who live in this time, the human beings who will be living at the other side of the frontier, those who will cross uh, the Holy, where the Holy Spirit will cross to, where the Holy Spirit flew from North America. It is necessary that we understand why the Holy Spirit flew from North America, because the Holy Spirit finished the work there through the seventh messenger and constructed the final part of the holy place with the people who lived in North America. It is necessary that we understand that when a messenger goes, it is because the labor has ended and the Holy Spirit of God flies and closes the frontier in order to meet with the next messenger whom the Holy Spirit will have to conclude to continue and to finish the work which he has already determined from before the foundation of the world. The frontier, crossing the frontier literally 
it is a frontier which separates North America from the Latin America. For that reason, when the seven angels appeared in 1963, those angels appeared to the seventh messenger and he was told that the thunders or that the thunders moved towards the south for what? in order to close the frontier because the thunders would be manifested. The thunders, the apocalyptic thunders would be manifested, would be heard in the land of America but towards the southern part of America because the Spirit of God flying from North America it flew towards Latin America it flew and crossed the, the frontier that is why it is, a, it is pointed out that the thunders moved towards Mexico because crossing towards Mexico uh, the thunders closed the frontier which separates North America from Central and South America and the Caribbean the Spirit of God would be flying to carry out the final work of the construction of the most holy place of the spiritual temple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there, in Latin America, there, in that part of the western continent, he would put the, the most holy place updated according to his program. For that reason, is that the temple which Moses constructed in the one of Solomon, the most holy place was in the west. Because in the west would be the construction of the most holy place of the spiritual temple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And for that reason, the Lord Jesus Christ said that the coming of the Son of Man would be like the lightning which comes from the east and the seen in the west. Because the western continent the continent of America, it would be in America where the coming of the Son of Man as the lightning would be seen in order to shine the most holy place of his spiritual temple and thus to shine the understanding, the mind and the heart of the human beings so that they can understand that great divine program which was being carried out for thousands of, for thousands of years and that in this end time it reaches its happy conclusion its happy completion it is necessary that we understand in this time in which we are living in what has been happening in that divine program because if we do not understand what has been happening then it will pass by us it will pass on top of our heads what God has promised for the West it is necessary that the West awakens to the reality wake up thou that sleepest and Christ shall shine upon thee 
the Holy Spirit from that most holy place of the spiritual temple, the Lord Jesus Christ, will shine unto thee. The understanding will open your mind so that you can understand the spiritual things, the things of God which have been happening for thousands of years from since thousand years back. And now something great which he has promised that he has promised for the human beings is happening today, in this day, in this end time. This is the time for the fulfillment of the promise of the coming of the Son of Man, the coming of the Lord as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, to carry out the work of redemption in its second part, which is the redemption of our earthly bodies in order to carry out the resurrection of the dead in Christ and the transformation of these earthly bodies which we have apparently. The transformation of the earthly bodies which is the redemption of the earthly body redeemed, taken to the original position taken to its original form in which God made man, the first man, and also the second man, in other words, the second Adam, which was by divine creation. It is necessary that we understand the hour in which we are living in. It is necessary that we understand that we are living in the greatest tower, in the most glorious tower of all time. It is necessary that we understand that we know that the Spirit of God has flown through the frontier. It, ha it has flown across the frontier from one nation to another, from North America towards Latin America. Therefore, it is necessary that we know the work which corresponds for this end time, which will be carried out to the other side of the frontier. We cannot be people who remain in the frontier because we would be a frontierling. Those who pass across the frontier, they go to the other side and they see the fulfillment of the divine promises according to the scripture. Because the Lord will do nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Therefore, the prophets of God have been speaking of the divine work which we'll do on the other side of the frontier. The other side, after the Holy Spirit has crossed the frontier, which separates North America from Latin America. Latin America is composed of Central and the South America, including the Caribbean. Therefore, it is necessary that we understand the program which God has for Latin America, including the Caribbean. It is necessary that we understand these things in order not to allow the Spirit of God to move to move without us understanding, uh, without finishing the work which is being carried out in our midst. It is necessary that we understand these things so that we 
colaboradores, our collaborators, para que nosotros seamos so that we be workers of God, the laborers of God in this great labor which corresponds to Latin America, which corresponds to the construction of the most holy place of the spiritual temple of the Lord Jesus Christ. In order to finish that work, in order for the Lord to be manifested, the Spirit of God in and through that most holy place of the temple which is in heaven and can bring the dead in Christ who are in paradise and can bring the transformation of our earthly bodies and from the most holy place can speak to the Hebrew people and can call and gather all the elect from among the Hebrews who are the 144,000 Hebrews who will see the coming of the Lord in his temple the most holy place according to the divine promise that is why it was said by the seventh messenger when they see him coming for his bride when they see him with them they will say this is the one we have been waiting for because he will be in his temple he will be manifested fulfilling his promises fulfilling his coming in his temple because it was said and he will come and the Lord will come suddenly in his temple it is also said that the Lord coming to his temple it will he, he will blind he will blind the eyes of the understanding and of the wise because the people have their own interpretation to the things of God which will be doing in this end time instead of taking the scripture and saying God has fulfilled the scriptures and when he's fulfilling them that will be the interpretation of those divine promises it is necessary that we are awake in our time so that God can take from among the Gentiles, among those who will be living at the, across the other side of the frontier and can construct the most holy place of his spiritual temple and thus he can manifest himself in his temple in the holy in the most holy place and carry out the work of the lion of the tribe of judah as the king of kings and the lord of lords sitting in the throne of his temple because his throne is the most holy place his throne is the ark of the covenant where there will be the tablets of the law updated where there will be that little book which was open in heaven and was brought to the earth and it was eaten on earth that little book will be in the most holy place in the ark of the covenant and upon the ark of the covenant will be the hidden manna to give it to the, to the overcomers and the ark of the covenant upon it will be the rod of, of Aaron which blossomed which will be updated and it will be the ministry the, the Levitical ministry or the Levite ministry not of Aaron but the ministry according to the order of Melchizedek 
there will be in the most holy place it will be manifested there that ministry according to the word of Melchizedek in order to be manifested as the high priest of that temple and also as the king of kings in that temple sitting as the son of David that is why it is necessary <coughs> that after knowing that the Spirit of God flow and crossed and passed the frontier towards Latin America, then it is necessary that we understand what is promised for God to carry out after the seventh age of the Gentile Church, after the ministry of the seventh messenger of the Gentile Church. Everything that he carries out later, after that ministry of the fourth Elijah, will be a close the other side of the frontier, because the Spirit of God flew to the other side of the frontier to carry out the work, the program which corresponds to the other side of the frontier, where there will be those who were seen in that vision, those who were seen as the natives, as the Indians, as people who are burnt by the sun. It is necessary that we understand the greatest blessing and the most important part of the divine program to understand that that blessing is across the other side of the frontier are closing the frontier because the Spirit of God closed the frontier, it moved from North America to Latin America. Therefore, it is necessary that we all walk towards where the Spirit of God has flown to in order to see what He is doing. That is not to say that one has to mutate, but you have to mutate spiritually. <coughs> Just like the people of Israel, they had to move from one place to another whenever the Spirit of God moved. Whenever the pillar of fire moved, the people had to move and cross each frontier that God crossed. Each frontier that God will cross, the people have to cross it because God was always in the place where he would go to and the place which he remained which he kept which he left behind it remained cut from the presence of the divine blessing that is why the ages of the gentile church were also like that whenever the spirit of god moved from one age to another uh, spiritually, the people had to move. And then the children of God appeared, would appear in a new nation, in a new continent, with a new message, and with a new message, and with a new messenger. And thus, it has been through the trajectory of that spiritual flying which the Spirit of God has been carrying out. He once more flew from the temple that was on earth, the, the temple which Solomon constructed to a new temple 
to Jesus of Nazareth. And through uh, a thou- 2,000 years, he has been moving from one nation to another, from one people to another, from one messenger to another, until in this end time, the Spirit of God has flown. It, it has flown from North America, from the place of the seventh age, the seventh Laodicean age, it, the Spirit has flown to Latin America. He has made a, a flight which has not been understood by those who lived in the past ages. Because in order to understand these things, one has to fly spiritually through the frontier and to pass to another side of the frontier in order to see the work which the Spirit of God is carrying out. There is no any other way to see and to understand what the Spirit of God has been doing after seeing the Spirit fly from North America to the Latin America. Every person who wants to see the Spirit of God fulfilling the promises which he has for this end time, he has to do the same which the Spirit of God did to fly from one side of the front to the other side of the frontier to fly to the other side to fly from one edge to the from the edge of Laodicea to another edge, to another side of the frontier, because the other side of the frontier is the eternal edge, the edge of the cornerstone, the edge of the stone that was not cut by hands, the eternal edge. That is why after the seven edges, it enters to another side of the frontier, crosses the frontier and enters eternity to an eternal age, to an eternal message, to an eternal work, to an eternal ministry. The ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ according to the order of Melchizedek. It is necessary that we understand these things in our time in order to be awake to the other side of the frontier. Because the Spirit of God flew from North America, passing through the frontier and closed to the other side of the frontier in order to continue his work, his construction of the spiritual temple of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is necessary that we understand these things because that is the program of God for these final days in which we are living in. It is necessary that you and I, we know where we are living. We are living across at we are living here across the frontier. We are living this side, this side of the frontier. We are living in the continent and in the place of the continent which has the promises of the coming of the Son of Man as the lightning 
in order to shine, to manifest himself in the West, in the land of America, this other side of the frontier, in order to fulfill all the divine promises which correspond to this end time and to the mystical body of the Lord, which correspond to the spiritual temple of the Lord through the frontier, across the frontier, the Spirit of God flow with the final message for the human being, a message for all nations, for all human beings, but it will be manifested in America are close this side of the frontier because the Spirit of God flew across the frontier. Across the frontier, it is necessary that every person sees what God has promised for the end time. It is necessary to close the frontier. It is necessary to look through across the other side of the frontier. Therefore, at the other side of the frontier, this other side, the Galilee of the Gentiles, across Jordan, as it was there, that the light shone upon those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death. Those who dwelt in darkness, in the shadow of darkness, in the shadow of death, light shone upon them across Jordan crossing the frontier of Jordan light shone and crossing the frontier a light will shine in and for Latin America the spiritual light the message of God for the end time the great voice of trumpet to gather all the elect, it will shine, and it will sound and will call all the elect in this end time. For what? So that they form the part of, this, of the most holy place of the spiritual temple of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the mystical body of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is necessary that we understand the time in which we are living in. It is necessary that we understand that with the construction and dedication of that temple, the ministry, according to the order of Melchizedek, it opens in that temple in order to minister to all the human beings on this earth. And also, for those who are in paradise, and also to minister in the entire universe. It is necessary that we understand these things, because what is happening in this end time is much more great than what our minds can understand can conceive. It is necessary that we understand what is promised to happen across the other side of the frontier. It is necessary that we all cross the frontier that we found we be found to have crossed from the edge of Laodicea, crossing the frontier which separates Laodicea from the eternal edge. 
Estemos and en la edad we eterna, are in the eternal en age, del hijo del hombre, in the age of the son of man, de la mente, in the age of the mind, en la edad, in the age en que in which the manifestation manifestación of all the children of God will be manifested and the resurrection of the dead in Christ and the transformation of our bodies. And then we will be in the eternal bodies as it is the plan, the, div the original program of God for, go for all the children of God. The original program of God was not that the human being comes to this earth through the union of a man and a woman and that they would live through, uh, they would exist through intimate relations, but by divine creation, by the creation of a spoken word. That is why in the end time, Everything returns to the beginning. Everything returns to the original place. The place of origin. All the children of God in their manifestation, though some are dead and they are in paradise, in the manifestation of all children of God who are on this earth, they will return in order to manifest themselves in eternal bodies in the resurrection of the dead in the bodies which they will come in not like they have apparently which mama and, and, and dad give, gave you but by the divine word so they will be children manifested the, the manifested children of God not children mom and dad but children of God children of the spoken word and those who those of us who are living we will be transformed by the word we will be transformed in this end time because the, the trumpet of God shall sound and the dead will resurrect we who are living we shall be transformed that will happen in this end time and we will be manifested as children of God in this earth in eternal bodies that is the manifestation of the children of God. That is what was typified there on the Mount of Transfiguration with the vision which uh, Peter, Jacob, and John had or saw when they saw the Lord Jesus Christ transformed, transfigured before them. And they saw Moses and Elijah speaking with him. There, the Lord was showing what would be the manifestation of the children of God in the end time. Just like for the manifestation, for the adoption of that first child of God who was adopted in that time, he was on earth, he was on the Mount of Transfiguration. There was Moses and Elijah, the minister of Moses and Elijah, for the adoption of that child of God, now for the end time, in the mountain, not in the mountain of the past, in that mountain of the past, uh, but in the updated mountain, which will be the Mount of God, the Mount of Zion, which will be the temple, the spiritual temple of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. There will be the ministry of Moses and Elijah, the ministry of the two olives, and of the two candlesticks, the midst of the two cherubims updated for the adoption and the manifestation of all the, son, of the children of God. Thus shall be in this end time. So for that reason, we be awake in these days. Because these are the days which they desired to see and to live in. All the holy prophets of the Old Testament and of the New Testament. 
the desired to live in them and to see what we will be seeing and to hear what we will be hearing. We are blessed because we can hear and see what is promised for this end time across this side of the frontier, this other side of the frontier, the other side of the frontier. You can see everything that is there across the other side of the frontier. So therefore, we should not remain neither in the first age but we will be uh, from the other side to this other side of the frontier. We cannot remain neither in the first nor in the second, third, fourth, fifth, not even the sixth. We will cross. We have crossed that frontier and we are across the other side of the frontier. Just like the people of Israel crossed the frontier and reached the promised land, each one of us crossing that frontier, that spiritual frontier, then we are found from this other side of the frontier, this side where there are all the divine promises for the end time, to this side where there are promises of the spirit of Elijah who said, and I will ride on this trail once more, which will be the fifth occasion. That same spirit, that, that same ministry of spirit which said, the spirit of God has left North America, has flown from North America. Therefore, the ministerial spirit of Elijah, manifested for the fifth time, will not be seen moving again on that trail for the fifth occasion in North America, but across the other side of the frontier, from, the other, from this side to the other side of the frontier, there will be, that is where he will be manifested, that is where he will manifest that ministry once more, so that he brings the message which later on will take will go to the Hebrew people. But first the Gentile people have to attend to that message who will be across the other side of the frontier, this side of the frontier where the Spirit of God will be moving will be fulfilling the final promises and carrying out the final stage of his program in the construction of the spiritual temple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Across uh, the other side of the frontier, the other side of the frontier, are all the blessings. The other side of the frontier, closing the frontier, will be all the, the marvelous works, the powerful things which are promised by God for the end time. When the Son of Man as the lightning will be shining in, in the west, in the land which in the final days will be in darkness and in the shadow of death. In darkness and the shadow of death in the different aspects of the life of the human being. They are in darkness and in the shadow of death in the political part, in the economical part and also in the spiritual part. 
But doesn't matter the economic situation, the social, the religious, or the political in which uh, the Latin America is found, the promise is greater than the problem which Latin America has. The promise is the manifestation, the revelation of the coming of the Son of Man to shine in the West. And the light shineth in darkness. It doesn't matter uh, how much is the darkness, but light is greater. And with the, the brightening or the shining of his coming, the scripture says that he will kill the Antichrist, not with uh, physical tools or arms, but with the shining of his coming and with the spirit and the sword that comes out of his mouth. Uh, in other words, with the message, with the word which he will be proclaiming, this side of the frontier across the other side of the frontier <coughs> with that the kingdom of Gentiles which will be headed by the Antichrist with that it will be destroyed with the bright shining of his coming which where he will shine in the west and the light will shine in darkness with that light shining and with that spirit that comes out of his mouth with the word with the sword that comes out of his mouth with the message that comes out of his mouth he will destroy uh, he will destroy the kingdom of the Gentiles. He will destroy the statue which Nebuchadnezzar saw, smiting it in the feet of iron and baked clay. We will understand all that and we will see all that the other side of the frontier. In other words, this other side, because literally we are this other side. What is left in the spiritual is to move to the other side of the frontier and we will do it. We do not have the message of the first age, neither of the second, of the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, not even of the seventh. We have the message that corresponds to us, to all of us, which in each age of the past was reflected in a portion and through in and through each age and each messenger they only reflected what we are going to have what we are going to have they only had half part of the, of the rainbow and that part with, uh, with half part of the colors of the rainbow but in, in our time the angel who descends with an archangel around his head and with a little book open in his hand that angel comes with it 
all that will be manifesting in the end time. We will understand all that. We will understand all that and we will sit this other side of the frontier. All that will be a reality which we will understand which will give us the faith to be transformed and raptured or translated. There will be the faith for the rapture and also for the transformation. That is why the other side of the frontier is where we shall live spiritually. We will have the message that corresponds to us and across the other side of the frontier it will be affected, it will be affected the fulfillment of the divine promises for this end time. The other side of the frontier will be carried out the fulfillment of all those things which will happen after the great voice of trumpet giving its message. In more clear words, across the other side of the frontier, we will see the fulfillment of the resurrection of the dead in Christ. And we will see the transformation of the living without the eternal message which corresponds to the other side of the frontier, there is no resurrection, no the transformation, because that message is the great voice of trumpet which gathers all the elect. The great voice of trumpet which calls all the children of the kingdom of God. And all that across the frontier, the other side of the frontier. In other words, this other side of the frontier. This other side of the frontier. Uh, traversing, closing the frontier we go to the, prom the divine promises for the end time the other side of the frontier because the other side of the frontier are all the blessings of God all the divine promises therefore we are on the other side of the frontier. In other words, this other side of the frontier. May God bless you and may God keep you. The next message, the ministerial interest in the house of God, preached in 1997 in Kaipo Rico. The message of the dispensation interlaces or intertwines with the message of the dispensation which ended. And that is why the things which were in the past dispensation close in a glorified way in, a, in, the, in the new dispensation. For example, the Pascal the Pascal 
which was in the dispensation of the law, it crossed in the dispensation of grace in a, a glorified way in the person of Christ, who was presented by John the Baptist as the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So they did not need to be sacrificing lambs because one, Jesus Christ was already crucified to be the Paschal Lamb of every believer in Him. And He redeemed us. With His blood, He cleansed us from all sin. He cleansed us from all sin on the cross of Calvary where He shed His precious blood for our reconciliation with God. Now we can see how this Inter inter interlaces of ages and of dispensations and also of messengers of ages and also of dispensations uh, these interlaces have been happening during all these centuries which have transpired and these millenniums that have transpired and some people have not even realized uh, these interlaces of ages and of dispensations and of messengers of ages and also of dispensational messengers and also you notice how the, the ministries for instance uh, that of Moses how the ministry of Moses would pass from one age to another or from one dispensation to another. Uh, the dispensation not of an age because the ministry of Moses is a dispensational ministry. And now we can also see the ministry of Moses of Elijah which has been passing from one stage to another. From the first Elijah, it passed to the second one. And from the second Elijah, it went to the third Elijah. In other words, from Elijah the Tishba, it went to Elisha. And from Elisha, it went to John the Baptist. And from John the Baptist, the third Elijah, it passed to William Marion Branham, who was the fourth Elijah. The fourth Elijah, from the fourth Elijah, it is promised that it would pass to the fifth Elijah, who is the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can see how it passes from one to another, from the first to the second, from the second to the third, and from the third to the fourth, and it is supposed to pass the fifth. These are the interlaces, the ministerial interlaces as well, the ministerial interlaces of Elijah, and the ministerial interlaces of Moses are the first Moses and the second one, and the second Moses is the, the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the ministry of Christ, you notice, for ages, it passed from the first angel messenger to the second, from the second to the third, to the fourth, to the fifth, and to the sixth, and to the seventh, but it was the ministry of Christ for ages, in other words, uh, on a lower scale, but for the last day, the ministry of Christ will pass according to the divine promise to his angel messenger. In him will be the ministry of Christ again being manifested on earth. And you notice through the ministerial interests, we can see that when the ministry of Elijah passed to Elijah, uh, from Elijah the Tishba by to Elisha, that was the second manifestation of the ministry of Elijah. The veil of flesh was, wasn't Elijah, but it was another man. Another man, but the ministry was the ministry of the prophet Elijah. In other words, that he came in the spirit and the virtue of Elijah, in the second prophet of God. In other words, Elisha. But the veil of flesh was for another man. It was with another man called Elisha, who had been the servant of Elijah the Tishbite. Let alone, when the minister went to John the Baptist, we can see that it was the spirit and virtue of Elijah 
in another man, the third man in which that ministry was manifested, and he had another new name, John the Baptist. Later on, it went to William Marion Branham, a new man, a new prophet, with a new name. The name wasn't Elijah, but was William Marion Branham. But the ministry was the ministry of Elijah for the fourth occasion. And later, after the fourth Elijah, in his ministry, his ministry, the ministry of Elijah is promised to pass to come in the fifth manifestation, which is the manifestation of the ministry of Elijah in the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who gives and who brings and operates this ministry these ministries is Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. He's the only one who has the ministries and is the only one who puts them in human beings and is the only one who operates them. The ministry of Moses will also be manifested in the last day in the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that will be Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit in his angel messenger, manifesting the ministry of Elijah for the second occasion and the ministry of, Je of, of Elijah for the fifth occasion. But the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ will not be Moses, neither Elijah, speaking in, in, in little terms, but another man with a ministerial spirit, in other words, with a ministerial spirit of Moses for the second time and of Elijah for the fifth time. And he will also be operating, Jesus Christ will be operating the ministry of Jesus Christ of, uh, of appearing on earth for the second time in his angel messenger. But the angel messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ will not be Jesus Christ. He will only be the veil of flesh where Jesus Christ will be operating and manifesting his ministry for the second time. And that is the angel of Revelation chapter 7 verse 12 and onwards who comes with the seal of the living God. Now, since the seal of the living God is the Holy Spirit with which uh, we are sealed unto the day of redemption, as, as the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 4 verse 30, we find that consequently that angel messenger is obligatorily a member of the mystical body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? It is simple. Because there is no person who can receive the Holy Spirit, no person can have the seal of the living God unless he believes Jesus Christ and receives the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In other words, if one is not born again with the Spirit of Christ, by believing Christ, he cannot have the seal of the living God. And that is only to say that a person written in the Lamb's Book of Life from before the foundation of the world, who in the time in which he comes to the earth, he receives Christ as his Savior, upon hearing the message, the preaching, of the gospel of grace, and it alone he receives his Holy Spirit and is born in the mystical body of Jesus Christ. And thus, that is how he can come with the seal of the living God. No person can have the seal of the living God, in other words, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, unless he has believed in Christ and has received his Spirit. That is why the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who comes with the seal of the living God. So he's, he's a member of the mystical body of Jesus Christ. Just like all the elect of the last day are members of the mystical body of Christ who believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior, who have received him as their Savior. They have believed in the gospel of grace being preached and they have received the Spirit of Christ, and they have entered the mystical body of Jesus Christ, and also they receive the message of the gospel of the kingdom in the last day through the manifestation of Christ through his angel messenger. That angel messenger is the prophet messenger of the dispersion of the kingdom with the spirit of Jesus Christ, where Christ will be manifested, manifesting his ministry for the second time, the ministry of Moses for the second time, and of Elijah for the fifth occasion. And that's how the ministry 
de Cristo, of Christ. In the last day, we will be in the Christians, mystical body of believers, operando operating in, él, in him the ministries de profeta, of the apostle, of the prophet, of the evangelist, of the, of the pastor, maestro, and of the teacher, nivel, operating them de dispensación, oh, dispensación, at a dispensational level with a dispensational message, and from there we rise all those who will be in the ministry in the age of the cornerstone, in the dispensation of the kingdom. There shall come so many people to have the ministries in the mystical body of Christ, and they will work, and they will have to, to have the house of God, but all will be subject to that dispensational ministry. That is why in Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 and onward says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophets of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. So you notice this book, the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ revealed it to John the Apostle in this symbolic form. In other words, this apocalyptic book was revealed by the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the Apostle St. John. Because this is the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ sent to bring this revelation to Jesus Christ to his church. That is why Revelation 22.16 says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. This angel messenger appears in Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 where it says the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. That is why in Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 says Christ through this voice of trumpet he says let's see Chapter 4, let's read it. Verse 1 says, After this I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was a, as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be here after. So, who does he send to make known all these things should happen soon? He sends his angel messenger. It is through his angel messenger that he will be making known to his church all these things should happen soon in the last day. That is why in Revelation 22 verse 6 he says, He said unto me, These words are faithful and true. And the Lord God, God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show unto his servants, the, to show unto his servants the things which, ma, which must shortly be done. Because it is through his angel messenger that Christ will be making known all these things to his church because he comes with the seal of the living God. The Holy Spirit in his angel messenger who will be revealing all these things to his church and after he will reveal them to the Hebrew people. And just like the Hebrews, though St. Paul and St. Peter brought the gospel to the Gentiles, Peter opened the house in the house of Colinarius. 
he opened it to the Gentiles and said, Paul took the message to Asia Minor. He brought it to the Gentiles in Asia Minor. And, and thus, the gospel of grace, the message of the first coming of Christ came to the Gentiles for salvation. He made known the work of Christ in his first coming there on the cross of Calvary as our Redeemer. And now, the gospel to be preached to the Hebrews it will be the gospel of the kingdom in the last day which will first be in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel of the kingdom is the message of the second coming of Christ as the Lion of the tribe of Judah as King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in his reclaiming work. That message first will be in the midst of the Gentile church because his church is the one which has been waiting for 2,000 years, waiting for his second coming. And that mystery revealed to his church in the last day that mystery is revealed to his church in the last day and later on it will be revealed to the Hebrew people and they will say this is the one we have been waiting for. Now we can see how the interlace of dispensations has been carried out. Where does everything rise that has been promised in the last day? We can see that from the dispensation of grace it goes to the dispensation of the kingdom. As everything moves from the dispensation of the law to the dispensation of grace. That is why the dispensation of grace from there comes the messenger for the dispensation of the kingdom. Believing in Jesus Christ as his Savior and receiving his Holy Spirit and thus being sealed in the kingdom of God. And he receives the ministry for a new dispensation. He also with the message of a new dispensation. Now we can see how from one dispensation is born a new dispensation. And from the ministry of one messenger of the past is born the ministry of a messenger for the present time. In other words, that it goes on passing from one age to another, from one messenger to another, from one message to another, and from one dispensation to another dispensation. Everything interlaces. And thus, it has been the divine program corresponding to a new age or to a new dispensation and even to a new messenger of an age or of a new dispensation. We can see that everything which is proclaimed as something new from behalf of God for humanity has to be in accordance to the interlace of ages and of dispensations and of the ministries, uh, ministerial dispensational ministries and uh, ministries of ages. That is why the ministries also interlace one with another, just like the ages. It's like as it is in a, in a release race. Uh, let's say that from each country a person begins, let's say in the World Olympics. And from each country, there is one representing their country who bears the testimony which is the, 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 the road, that road which they carry in reeds, comes out and then he covers some meters, the one who is carrying that road, he gives it to another who will continue running. There is a place where they interlace or they intertwine. And then another one grabs it. Uh, you can see that there is a moment where the two of them are running. That moment uh, is when the one who has the road brings it. He brings that stuff or the testimony and he's reaching, his, he's reaching the end. And a little before, 
The one who is going to take over, to take on that, that rod or staff, he also runs and he picks it and he continues running. They intertwine there and he continues running. But the one who gave him, he also kinds, uh, uh, kind of, he continues running. The one who handed over the, the scepter or the staff. In other words, that part of that really, one messenger already ended his part, but, but he has an interest. And from one moment to another, when he takes the, the staff, he's, he continues running for that, uh, that intertwining. And later on, another one, he's waiting for him, the one from his own country, he's waiting for him to take that staff to continue running. And thus they go on from one, uh, one stage to another until the last one picks the, the rod or the staff or the scepter. And then that is the one who will reach the goal. Now, in the divine program, we find that we have a race of eight uh, cycles. Eight cycles of ages of the Gentile Church. We see seven stages of the Gentile Church where there are different messengers in this spiritual uh, spiritual road or spiritual race. This is the race to eternal life where every person who enters to the divine program he enters believing in Christ and receiving his spirit and is represented in the messenger of his age just like the runner represents his country each messenger represents their age in the territory where that age is fulfilled later on when we reach the, the final track, we find that uh, you notice the first age of the Gentile Church was in Asia Minor, and the track, that track was fulfilled there. And the second was in Europe, where the second angel messenger was fulfilled. Just like Paul was in Asia Minor, in the first age of the Gentile Church, and thus in Europe was fulfilled five angel messengers in the manifestation of the Spirit of God, pointed out as the seven spirits of God. In Europe, there were five manifestations, in other words, five eyes of God. Later on in North America was fulfilled the seventh eye, or the ministry of Christ, in William Marion Branham. He, it, was, it was the seventh track in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ with her members and her messenger. And now, for the final track, which is the, the, the track of the age of the cornerstone, the Spirit of Christ passes to Latin America and the Caribbean. And it is with the members of Latin America and the Caribbean in the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ that the last track is, is, is run with a, with a staff or the testimony to give the testimony of all these things should happen soon, giving the testimony of all these things to all churches and making known all these things should happen soon. He comes with a scepter in the last day for the final track, for the track wherein we will receive the crown of eternal life, where we will be crowned with eternal life, with an eternal body, and with a theophanic eternal spirit, which will be in that body, and thus we shall be crowned with eternal life as he promised. 
In other words, that finishing this track, we will receive immortality. And in a race, we find that there are some people who get tired they get, or they get some problems and they stop and those never reach the goal that is why they can never be crowned but those who continue onwards no matter if they had some, some pain or some problems they continue onwards and obtain the victory, they will be crowned. doesn't matter the problems which they had along the way. What is important is one not to stop along this Christian journey. What is important is to continue in the age and the dispensation which one is called to live in, always asking God to be his helper, to strengthen him, to have mass upon him to reach the goal and obtain the crown of eternal life where the dead in Christ will resurrect because they obtained the victory in the track in which they lived in the track represents the angel messenger and the age in which they lived in and now in the last day we will reach the goal we will obtain victory in love divine we will be crowned with eternal life you notice the importance of the interest you see from the first angel messenger uh, the first angel messenger takes the staff or the, the scepter, the testimony from the first to the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the seventh. Uh, the seventh is taken by the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ and he continues onwards. He takes the word and he continues on this track because we cannot stop. And the church of the Lord Jesus Christ cannot stop. It has to continue onward. It's the stage it is called to live in the last day, which is the stage of the age of the cornerstone. In the most holy place of the spiritual temple of Jesus Christ. Until we all reach the perfection. Being transformed in this last day. And the dead in, and the dead in Christ being resurrected. The ministerial interests in the house of God. In other words, you notice the second angel messenger, uh, he couldn't be a person who didn't intertwine or interlace with the message of St. Paul. And so on, each end messenger was interlacing with the, me, with the past messenger and the past age. And where the most marked, the most marked interest would be in the last day between the seventh end messenger of the seventh Gentile Church age and the age of the Lord Jesus Christ who according to the scripture will be the angel messenger of the age of the cornerstone the eighth angel of the eighth eternal age and that angel is the eighth messenger of those whom God will send to his church who are represented there in heaven when those angels appeared where they took the seventh angel messenger of the seventh Gentile church age there in heaven about 27 miles uh, 27 to 30 miles high there appeared those angel messengers with the seventh angel messenger of the seventh Gentile Church Age. In other words, there were eight angel messengers there. They are angel messengers of the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ from St. Paul up to the angel messenger for the age of the cornerstone who, just like the other angel messengers, uh, appeared here on earth in human flesh and they had the Spirit of Christ in them. Also, the angel of the age of the cornerstone who is the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ 
Uh, that ministerial spirit would be on earth the angel who gave the revelation to, to John he would be in human flesh here on earth manifesting the age of the cornerstone with the message of the age of the cornerstone and with the scepter of God the scepter of Christ, the word of Christ, the message of Jesus Christ for the last day so that we all enter into this race, into this track the final track and we reach to the goal and we obtain victory in love divine. Now we can see that this eighth angel messenger is the eighth. If we, if we count the seven church ages, we see that he's the eighth messenger, but at the same time he's the seventh messenger of the seventh dispensation. In other words, that the eighth is the seventh angel messenger, the seventh dispensational messenger for the dispensation of the kingdom. And thus, es como en el día like, uh, thus it is este in the last day, this ministerial interest would be carried out where? De Dios. In the house of God. <coughs> you notice how in the house of God uh, there has been the, the ministerial interests. You see the seven ministerial interests of the seven gentile church ages everything has been in the house of god in the house of the lord jesus christ and this interest of the seventh angel messenger to the angel messenger of the lord jesus christ for the age of the cornerstone in it is in the eighth age and we also find that it is in the house of god because that is where he is receiving the seal of the living God, every child, every son and daughter of God. That is where uh, the new birth is carried out in every person to be born as the son and daughter of God in the kingdom of God through believing Christ and receiving his Holy Spirit. So we can see this angel messenger of Jesus Christ with the seal of the living God is a, 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 the child of Jesus Christ one born of water and, and spirit who would be born in the house of God in the last day just like they were born in the house of God the seven angel messengers of the seven gentile church ages and just like the messengers of the dispensation of the law, and the dispensational messenger of the law, they were all born in the midst of Hebrew people. In other words, as part of the Hebrew people. When I say that all were born in the midst of the Hebrew people, that is not to say that they were born in, in the land of Israel because Moses was born in Egypt. But in the midst of the Hebrew people, in other words, in the midst of the descendants of the Hebrews, now it is through the descendants of the second Adam, through the descendants of Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham, and also Jesus Christ, the son of David. Through Jesus Christ is that all the members of the mystical body of Christ have been born in the house of God. And for that reason, they have the blessing of the birthright because they are the firstborns of God. They are the first ones who are born in the house of God. They are the first ones who are born again. And the first ones who are born again, they belong to the mystical body of believers, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the one that has the birthright as Ephraim received it. And for that reason, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is composed of the firstborns of God written in heaven in the Lamb's book of life. Now, we can see that through Christ, 
who is the first and the beginning of that new creation, we see that he has been carrying out the creation of a new race, which in the last day would reach her perfection. In other words, it will reach perfection because it uh, it will reach perfection because it will have a physical eternal glorified body which we shall live in for all eternity. That is why it has been very important. The ministry of Jesus Christ has been very important passing through these seven angel messengers and in the last day it goes to the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ because it is for the perfection of the saints for the perfection of the members of the mystical body of the Lord Jesus Christ the ministerial interest in the house of God we have seen that he has had many faithful and wise servants in his house, in his church, from age to age. And for the last day, well, he will be the last. Uh, there will be the last of his faithful and wise servants, who is the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the one who has the promise. Verily, I say unto you, that upon his goods he will put him. In other words, blessed is that servant whom when his servant comes you will find him doing so, giving the spiritual food in due time. In other words, the message which corresponds to that time. The message that corresponds to the time of the second coming of Christ. Which one is it? The message of the second coming of Christ. The message of the second coming of Christ as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that faithful and wise servant who will be giving the food will be the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that will be the faithful and wise servant whom his Lord will put upon his all his goods, who will sit with the Lord in his throne. To him that overcometh, I will give him to sit with me in my throne. In which throne? Christ sat in the throne of the Father in heaven and he said, As I overcame and am sat down with my Father in his throne. Just like Christ sat with the Father in his throne in heaven, now Christ promises to the overcomer that who, who will be the faithful and wise servant. He says, I will give him to sit with me in my throne. The throne which is in heaven is not the throne of Jesus Christ. The throne of Jesus Christ is the throne of David. It is the throne of David there in the midst of the Hebrew people. In that throne, that is where Christ promises to sit the overcomer. I will allow him to sit with me in my throne as I overcame and I'm sat down with my father in his throne. Now you will notice the great blessing which is there for the last day. That is why in the last day when the dead in Christ resurrect and we who are living are transformed Christ will sit upon his throne there in, in Israel, he will sit upon the throne of David, and with him, the overcomer, he will sit with him, the angel messenger. His angel messenger, his angel messenger will also be uh, the one who will be with Christ in that judgment which Christ will carry out for the rewards which the members of the mystical body of Jesus Christ will receive. That is the angel whom Jesus Christ will be using in this time. Just like he will be using him in this last day, so that through him he makes known all things which should happen soon, uh, making them known first in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and later alone to the Hebrew people. That is the ministering angel of the last day. That is the angel who will be in the last day 
with the ministry of the last day corresponding to the house of God. And under that ministry is that everything will be subject to that ministry, that ministry which Christ will be operating in his angel messenger. Now we have seen the interest, the ministerial interest where? In the house of God. Many people are waiting for the fulfillment of the promises corresponding to the last day in so many places. But many have not realized that all this is in the house of God. In other words, in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The interest has occurred where? From age to age, in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the house of God. And thus it is for this last day. The ministerial interest in the house of God. You notice for each age there was a ministry, only one, and the rest of the ministries, local ministries, depended on that, on that ministry, the ministries of congregation, the ministries of evangelists, the ministries of pastors, of teachers, and of the apostles, everything depended on that ministry which God put in the messenger of that age. And thus it is for the last day, for the age of the cornerstone, and for the dispensation of the kingdom. And understanding these things, we can see how to work in the kingdom of God in harmony with Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit through the messenger who corresponds to the time in which one is called to live in. They could work in harmony in the first age with St. Paul. And thus would be working in harmony with Jesus Christ who was in St. Paul, operating that ministry corresponding to that first age. And thus it is for each age. <coughs> that is why uh, those who rose against the ministry in the age which they lived in fighting uh, they would be found fighting against Jesus Christ those who rose against the dispensational ministry of each dispensation in the past they, will, they were found uh, fighting against God and thus it is for our age, the age of the cornerstone, and for our dispensation, the dispensation of the kingdom. But those who are found working hand in hand with the messenger of their age, or of their dispensation, they are found working hand in hand with God, working in the program of God corresponding to the time in which they lived in. And thus it is for the age of the cornerstone and for the dispensation of the kingdom. Thus it is for our time in this last day in the, in, in the ministerial interest in the house of God. The next message uh, the mystery of the death of the birth of Christ preached in 1997. Now <coughs> Now we can see those four letters. They, they have a pronunciation which the prophet Moses had. Now, we find that when Jesus appeared, he was none other than that angel who had appeared to Moses. He was none other than that angel who has the name of God, the eternal name of God. Now you notice how Jesus Christ on one occasion said, Father, glorify your name. 
God, with a voice of a thunder from heaven, he said, I have glorified it and will glorify it once more. In other words, once more. That is a divine promise. And that divine promise, you notice, will be fulfilled uh, partly it was fulfilled in the first coming of Christ where the name of God was glorified. And he will glorify it once more in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, there will be the name of the angel of the Lord. You notice in John chapter 12, verse 28, or 27 onward says, Now is my soul troubled. What shall I say? This was on the Mount of Olives, there in Gethsemane. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. In other words, he had come for that purpose, to take our sins, to become mortal, and to die on the cross of Calvary. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven. Let's see. This was a little bit before uh, Gethsemane. He says, Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said, an angel spoke to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sex. Now, you notice how the eternal name of God was glorified in the first coming of Christ and it will be glorified in the second coming of Christ. In the coming of the Word made flesh 2,000 years back in Jesus. The name of God was glorified, the name of the angel of the covenant, and it will be glorified according to Revelation chapter 19, the coming of the word, according to Revelation, the coming of the word, which is the coming of the white horse rider of Revelation 19, who has the name that no one knows but him that receiveth it. Revelation 19, let's see what he says. Verses 11 and on says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doeth judge Meko. His eyes were as flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. That is the coming of the angel of the covenant 
the coming of the word in his second coming the forerunner of the second coming of Christ in the book of Sears on page 256 in Spanish it says but when our Lord appears here on earth he will be riding on a snow white horse and he will be completely fully the Emmanuel the word of God incarnate in a man in other words, the word coming in human flesh in the last day in the fulfillment of the second coming of Christ. The word coming veiled in what? Incarnate in what? In a man. That is what the, the forerunner of the second coming of Christ said. In other words, the angel of the covenant, the angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ in his Theophanic body, Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit, for the last day, he will have a veil of flesh in which he will be veiled and revealed, and where he will be glorified, where the eternal name of God will be glorified. And where Jesus Christ will be manifested as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, as the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords, in his reclaiming work. Now remember that the first coming of Christ as the Lamb of God, manifested in human flesh, in a man called Jesus of Nazareth, uh, that mystery was fulfilled on earth for 33 years. And the people did not realize that the veil of flesh was there, where the word was incarnate in all his fullness. They did not realize that there was the angel of the covenant veiled in human flesh in the first coming of Christ as the Lamb of God. And thus it shall be for the second coming of Christ as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in his reclaiming work. The angel of the covenant will be manifested in human flesh in the man of the last day uh, for so many years. And the people who will be living on earth will not realize what will be happening in the program of God and will not realize that Jesus Christ will be the Holy Spirit, the veil of flesh here on earth in the last day, in the end time, in the age of the cornerstone. And he will be there carrying out the work corresponding to the end time. The first coming of Christ was manifested on earth for 33 years. In other words, the coming of the angel of the covenant in human flesh, in the veil of flesh created by God in the womb of Mary because there was no clean or cleansed human flesh cleansed of sin because they had all come from the first Adam who had sinned and were all contaminated by the sin. And God had to create a body of flesh without sin in order to dwell in that body. And later, after carrying out the work of redemption on the cross of Calvary and washing us with his precious blood and filling us with his Holy Spirit, now, for all these 2,000 years which have transpired, and even in our time, we see that there are people who are cleansed from all sin, and who are filled of the Spirit of God, born in the kingdom of God, and born again. And the person who is born again has no sin, because the blood of Christ has taken away his sins. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Therefore, the angel of the covenant, the angel of the Lord, has been manifested from age to age in each angel messenger sent by God. And that has always been the human flesh washed from all sin without sin. And for the last day, he will be manifested in his angel messenger washed 
of all sin, with the blood of Christ, and filled with the Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, and therefore he will be without sin, and he will be the instrument of Jesus Christ of the angel of the covenant for his manifestation of the last day. Through whom he will be speaking to his church, he will be making known to her all these things should happen soon in the end time. John wanted to worship the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ, but the angel stopped him and told him, See that thou do it not, because I am thy fellow servant of your brethren the prophets. Worship God. <coughs> Uh, why did John want to worship at the feet of the angel who showed him these things? Because he saw the manifestation of Jesus Christ, of the angel of the covenant, the angel of the Lord, of God, manifested in his angel messenger. And he heard the voice of Christ as that great trumpet speaking through his angel messenger. Because that angel is the one who showed John all these things which John saw in the book of Revelation. Now you notice how the angel is identify, identifies himself as one of the prophets of God. And he tells John that he should not worship him, instead to worship God. Jesus Christ, one, on one occasion he said, the hour cometh when uh, the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, because such the Father seeketh to worship him. The angel of the Lord Jesus Christ is the last prophet messenger whom, God would, whom Jesus Christ would send in his church. And that is the prophet of the last dispensation, the dispensation of the kingdom, with the last dispensational message, which is the message of the gospel of the kingdom, which rotates around the second coming of Christ. The angel messenger of Jesus Christ is not the Lord Jesus Christ. He is only the prophet messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ through whom Jesus Christ will be manifested in the last day in the age of the cornerstone and in the dispensation of the kingdom make known to us all these things should happen soon in this end time. For him he does not want any honor than him being the angel messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ for the last day, the instrument of Jesus Christ for the last day. With that it will be enough for the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you notice how, just like for the first coming of Christ, there was an earthly Israel where the first coming of Christ was fulfilled. Now for the second coming of Christ there will be a heavenly Israel. And that heavenly Israel is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ which for 2,000 years approximately has been waiting for the second coming of Christ. And it is for the heavenly Israel, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is, uh, the promise of the second coming of Christ first and then later to the Hebrew people. And his coming is as the lion of the tribe of Judah, the king of kings and the lord of lords in his reclaiming work. There will be the name, the eternal name of God manifested. And that would be enough for him. It will be enough for the children of God to know that there will be the eternal name of God manifested. Though many will not be able to understand it. But he says in, in Revelation chapter 19 verses Let's see. 
Verse 2, he says, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. In other words, that people cannot appear saying that they know the mystery of that name because that mystery he knows it himself and in his manifestation in human flesh it will be known by the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that mystery and he will, com he will understand it in the manifestation of the word coming as the white horse ride of Revelation 19, coming in human flesh and having that name which no one understood except him. He comes to obtain the victory of love divine. And with that name, you will obtain victory in love divine because God will glorify his name. He said, I have glorified it and I will glorify it once more. Now, let's leave uh, the issue of the name quietly because. We all know that in the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the age of the cornerstone, which is the age of the most holy place, that is where that name will be manifested, and he will be working, that name will be working in favor of all the sons and daughters of God. Just like in the most holy place, of the temple which Solomon constructed and the tabernacle that the prophet Moses constructed was the eternal name of God there in the most holy place. Why? Because who, there was who? There was the end of the covenant, the end of the Lord upon the mercy seat which was on the ark of the covenant. That is the end of the Lord, the one who has the eternal name of God. God didn't God say speak about the end of the Lord do not rebel against him because he will not pardon your transgressions because my name is in him. Where is the name of God? Uh, where the name of God is, that is where the name of God, uh, the name of the Lord is, which is the eternal name of God. And in his second coming, he comes as the lion of the tribe of Judah, as king of kings and lord of lords. And in Revelation 19, if the end of the covenant comes, the end of the Lord who is the word, coming in human flesh in the last day, well, he comes with his eternal name. And there will be that name manifested, that eternal name. Therefore, that he will come manifested. The angel of the covenant, the angel of the Lord, he will come manifested in the eternal name of God in the last day. God will glorify his eternal name in the last day. Now, let's see. Just like the way Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in other words, the first coming of Christ, where? In, in Bethlehem of Judea. But many people have been born in, in Bethlehem of Judea, many descendants of David. Even David himself was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Now, Bethlehem is the house of the bread of God. And Christ is the house of the bread of God. That is why he was born in Bethlehem of Judea. And Christ being the house of the bread of God, you notice how Christ spoke the word, because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. And there was the bread of God, the word. That is why he said, 
I am the living bread which has descended from heaven. And whosoever eateth on this bread will live eternally. Now you notice how the bread of life was manifested in human flesh in Jesus because he is the house of the bread of God. And now, Christ being the house of the bread of God, he is our Bethlehem. And all those who are born in Christ, believers in Christ, who have washed their sins in the bread of Christ, and have received his Holy Spirit, they have been born in Christ. And consequently, they have been born in Bethlehem. Because Christ is our Bethlehem. He is the house of the bread of God, the bread of life. And the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ also is the house of God. And that is the heavenly Israel. And that is the house of God. And consequently, it is the house of the bread of God where Christ the bread of God has been from age to age, feeding his children from age to age through each faithful and prudent servant that he has sent. And thus the church of the Lord Jesus Christ having those who are born in Christ the, the, the bone of Bethlehem, the church of the church bread of Jesus Christ becomes the, becomes Bethlehem, little Bethlehem, and in our time, in the age of the cornerstone, the little Bethlehem. For the last day, we have the fulfillment of the second coming of Christ because in the church of Jesus Christ you notice through believing in Christ and washing our sins in the blood of Christ and receiving his Holy Spirit we are born in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in other words we are born in the, in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ as Bethlehem who will have sons and daughters of God descendants of Christ the son of David and consequently all those who are born in Christ, in the mystical body of Christ, they are the house of David. And for that reason, they are kings and they are priests to reign with Christ for a thousand years and let alone for all eternity. And that is why we will all be with Christ reigning. And from Jerusalem, upon, uh, will be reigning from Jerusalem upon the entire planet Earth, and upon the, the Hebrew people, because that house, that family, that descendant, descendants of, of David is the one who will receive the kingdom of God and will reign with Christ as the, with, with the Messiah for a thousand years later for the entire eternity. <coughs> now you notice how among those who are born in Christ, our Bethlehem, and in the church of Jesus Christ, our Bethlehem, as the church, there will be one in whom, from age to age, God would be will manifest. Jesus Christ manifesting himself, and that would be the messenger of each age of each stage of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, who was manifested in St. Paul in the first angel messenger, the, the first angel messenger among the Gentiles, 
and Irenaeus the second, Martin the third, Corumba the fourth, Luther the fifth, Wesley the sixth, and William Marion Branham the seventh, and in the end of the Lord Jesus Christ the eighth. For the age of the cornerstone. And all these are born in Bethlehem. As the King David was born in Bethlehem. And also in Bethlehem was born the brothers of King David, who were seven brethren of King David. But the, the younger was who? Was David, who was the eighth, the son of Jesse. Now you notice. How in the manifestation of the eighth messenger, Jesus Christ will be manifested as the son of man, son of David, to make a reclaim of his throne and of his kingdom to train upon the Hebrew people and upon all nations and to make a reclaim of his church all those who redeemed with his precious blood to put them in eternal bodies those who are living in the dead in Christ those who lived in the past stages now you notice how these eight uh, sons of Jesse are represented in the eight messengers of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ among the Gentiles. And how in the manifestation of the eighth messenger who is represented in the King David, Christ will be manifested as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in his work of reclaiming. And he will reclaim the throne of David because he is the heir to the throne of David. And in his final manifestation as the son of David, Jesus Christ will reclaim his throne and he will sit upon the throne of David and upon the overcomer who will be his end messenger. He says, to him that overcometh, I will give to sit with me in my throne as I overcame and I am sat down with my father in his throne. In other words, in the throne of God in heaven, uh, when Christ overcame, when he died and resurrected and ascended to heaven, he sat on the throne of God in heaven on the right side of the Father and received power upon all things. And now, in his throne, the throne of Christ, which is not the one which is in heaven, but the throne of David, in which Christ will sit because he is the heir to that throne. He says, To him that overcometh, I will give to sit with me in my throne, as I overcame and I am sat down with my Father in his throne. In other words, the same thing that the Father did with Jesus when he ascended victoriously, the same thing that the Father did who sat with him in his throne in heaven, now Christ does the same with the overcomer, with his angel messenger of the last day. He will sit him in his throne with him and will be fulfilled what is promised. In chapter 2 of the book of Revelation, verse 26 to 27, which says, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. He will receive authority upon all nations, the overcomer, as Christ received authority in heaven and on earth when he sat on the throne of the Father. The next message, the Lord Jesus Christ working after the seven ages of the church, preached in 2003. Uh, therefore, we find that a messenger cannot come unless he is in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has to be connected with the messenger, with the past messenger. In other words, with the message of the past messenger and with the message of the foundation which St. Paul put.
y nadie puede poner otro fundamento. No one can put another foundation. But Jesus Christ. In other words, is that no one can come to the church of Jesus Christ and say, well, we are going to begin with the Mohammedan religion or the, the religion of Confucius or Buddha or Buddhism. That doesn't work in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you notice, the Reverend William Branham says, uh, I am only building the Hawa is close at hand. When you are going to see something happen, when something is going to take place in all this background, uh, in other words, all the introduction work which he did is the foundation. All this found background here, here has only been laying a foundation for a short, quick message that will shake the whole nations. In other words, that he put a foundation. In other words, everything that he said that would happen after his ministry, that is a foundation for the message which will come after the message of the Reverend William Branham. There is no any other message promised to come in the scriptures than the message of Moses and Elijah. There is no any other message promised but the message of the gospel of the kingdom. There is no any other message promised but the message of the age of the cornerstone. And there is no any other mystery a ministry promised but the ministry of Moses and Elijah for the last day which is the minister of the angel who comes with the seal of the living God in Revelation 7 verse 2 and onwards where there will be the ministries of the two olives being operated by the Holy Spirit and for that reason uh, everything that has been prophesied by the Reverend William Branham and St. Paul and St. Peter and Jesus Christ himself and the rest of the prophets of the Old Testament uh, after the seven Gentile church ages we find that everything is under the seventh seal that is why it was so mysterious at the time of Brother Branham such an extent that the people of Brother Branham's time thought that after the ministry of Brother Branham, God would not have any more prophets. But in the Bible it says that there is the ministry of the two olives. So therefore, what comes after the ministry of the Reverend William Branham is what will fulfill the prophecies of this end time. In other words, the great was not the time of Banham, but of our time. That is what he said, that the great will come later. Now you notice the seven angel messengers who are the seven stars which our brother Bermudez spoke about. Oh, yeah. When Christ has the seven stars in his hand in Revelation chapter 1, which verse? Verse 16. The people who see that scripture, they only see the seven stars. Because the greatest star is the one who has the rest of the stars in his hand. Christ is the bright morning star. When he speaks about that there will be an eternal age, the age of the cornerstone, a new dispensation, then there has to be a messenger, another star. And if there has to be another star, which has to be a dispensational star, where are we going to find it? Let's see here in Revelation chapter 2, verse 28. And if we can begin from 26, we find it more fast. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works and unto the end, to him I will give power over nations. And this one keeps the, the works of the Lord until when? Until the end. It is not at the beginning, in the first age of St. Paul, neither the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, but for the one who keeps the works of Christ until until up to the end. 
Y en la tumba cambie, quipe mi work sobre las naciones. And to the end, I will give him authority over nations. That's why he has to adopt, to adopt him and give him the title deed to give him authority over nations. That authority, no messenger had it in any of the seven ages. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as they received of my father. Under the ministry of the two olives, that, that prophecy will, has a fulfillment. And I will give him the bright and morning star. So therefore, where will that eighth star be? The messenger who receives that authority. And I will give him the bright and morning star. Who is Christ, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the angel who comes with the Holy Spirit, who comes with the seal of the living God, comes with the star, the bright and morning star inside him. And there is the eighth star. When it speaks of eight, it speaks of eternity. The eternal star, bright and morning eternal star, Jesus Christ our Savior. Uh, that is also. When the seven angels appeared to William Branham, you notice if you count Branham, then there are eight. Now we find the angels who appeared, one of them was more outstanding. The one who had more significance, the one who had the seventh sin, on page 469 in the book of Sirius. That was the angel who came with the seal of the living God. And now we find that he was the angel whom he says that he took him up. He picked him up. He ruptured him. And also in the message called Shalom, he says that there is the name of God in there. In other words, YHWH. There was the name of God uh, displayed in heaven. Why? Because that angel who was different from the rest is the one who comes with the name of God. When he was speaking about that angel, he says that that is the mystery of that angel. In other words, there is the mister of the seventh seal. Let's see on page 81. If someone has the book of seals there, Everything that was in there was recorded. Vamos a ver aquí. Dice, Let's see here. On page, on page 482, he's speaking about Israel. 
Matthew 24:32-33 when he speaks about the fig tree está hablando de Israel he speaks about Israel en su en su propia patria in her land but you notice you notice that he did not speak anything about the seventh seal and even here in revelation in the opening of the seals he also omitted it vemos pues que es un misterio por completo do you notice that this is a complete mystery and the hour has not come for it to be made known in other words There is an hour and if he speaks of an hour he also speaks of a time and of an age hemos llegado hasta aquí we have reached up to here and the rest will be given to us in the time in which Jesus appears again on earth to take his bride página 57 dice del libro de los sellos y vi otro ángel fuerte descender del cielo. Page 60 says I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven equipped with a cloud and went upon his head. If you notice that Christ because he in the Old Testament was called the angel of the covenant and he directly is directly coming to the Jews. Now for the church is finished see All right. And his face as it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire. Remember that angel of revelation 1, same thing. Angel is a messenger. He is the messenger to Israel. See? The church has been ruptured. See? Now of fixing to be ruptured he comes for his church. Now you notice he comes for his church. The angel of Revelation chapter 10 and is the messenger to Israel. Dice que viene por Israel. He says that he comes for Israel. Later on he says that he comes for his church. Viene directamente a He comes directly to what? To the Jews. Dice que es un mensajero. He says that he is a messenger to Israel. Pero ahora por cuanto la iglesia ha llegado a su But now since the church has reached the end, he comes for his church, his church bride. Ahora Now let's see a little more. Hablando aquí speaking here en la página 3 483 y 484 in the book of English he says another thing I want you to notice Uh, what taken place y si ustedes llegan a and if you are listening to the tape es, of, the, of what time is it sir you will notice that the angel was not able to me este the rest of them just were seemed ordinary ordinarily but this angel was a noted angel he was to my left in the constellation in form of a pyramid and remember it was in the pyramid where the mysterious white rock was not written on And the angels took me into that pyramid of themselves de esa pirámide formada por the mysteries of God known only to them he was taken to them how many were there hay ocho ángeles there are eight angels porque because si cuando él fue levantado y colocado if he was raised and taken in the midst solamente si solamente hay siete if there are only seven pues entonces no era un ángel real el que del cual él hablaba que then there was no angel whom he was he talked about that was notable hay ocho ángeles there are eight angels in other words the eight the, the seven angel angels of the church ages and the one who was different from the rest los misterios de dios eran solamente conocidos por ellos The mysteries of God were only known to them. Each messenger, each angel received the mystery, the, the divine mystery of his time. He proclaimed it, and Christ brought the revival of that age, and that was, and that was the collaborator of Christ. In the work of Christ in the midst of His church, and those who worked with that messenger were collaborators of God as well. Through the labor which they carried out together with the messenger of their time. And if each of those messengers knew the mystery of God for their time, the angel who was different from the rest will know the mystery corresponding to this final time after the seven uh, church ages. 
because that angel comes with the seventh seal under that angel is is where the seventh seal is spoken about the mysteries of God were only known to them and now the messenger had come to interpret that pyramid or, or that message that pyramid is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ which was shown in a vision to people who were showed that vision and the Reverend William Branham spoke about it in the message, the stage of the perfect man, and he brought a, a diagram of a pyramid which represents the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and consequently also represents each person as the spiritual temple of Christ. And there are diagrams of different ages of the church and of the different virtues Christ manifested in each believer in Christ. Therefore, each virtue corresponds to the manifestation of God in each age. He continues saying, the message of the secret of these seven seals which lays within, within inside the pyramid. Now the angel was to my left would really be the last or seventh angel if we would count them from left to right because he was on my left me looking to him towards the west in other words the reverend William Branham was looking towards the west the angel came from the west flying towards the east Because he was on my left, me looking to him towards the west, him coming towards the east, from the west to east, he would be, would be on, on the left side, so that would be the, the last angel's message that left that last angel the message of that last angel rotates around what around who around himself would be on the left side so that would be the last angel's message very notable remember how I said he had his got his head back in his great sharp wings and how he flew right to me now that is the seventh seal See? that is the seventh seal the angel who was different from the rest and his message which is a, a very extraordinary message. The mystery of the seventh seal, the revelation of the seventh seal. It is still a notable thing. And we, are, we don't know what it is as yet because it is not permitted to be broken. Now you notice on page 549 in the book of seals, he says that Uh, let me read in this book. He says on page 549 in the book of English, of, or in the book of series in English, that shows it's from God. For see, if it fits exactly in the promises of God from the end of the of the message in other words that it has to match with all the promises for that time if it doesn't then it's not of God the message for each age matches the promises which God has done for that age for example if we saw Jesus preaching let's say let's, let's construct an ark because a flood is coming that message would not match with what God had promised for that time. 
because what God had promised at that time was that he would, he would send the forerunner and the foreign to carry out the work of redemption on the cross of Calvary. Everything has to match. The message through the messenger that God has promised for that time in which that messenger appears. And the only one who can open the mystery of God for that age, for that dispensation, is the messenger with the message which he brings. Because that message is the, is the divine revelation for that time given by God to that messenger. And when that messenger appears, he appears with a divine revelation and he begins to proclaim that message and God begins to do what he promised for that time. And the people say there's something there. That man has some mystery. There is a mystery in him. How, how can he able to do all these things? Because you notice, this one says this, he says this and he says this and things are happening. But they don't realize the word, the creative word which God has put in that person, giving that message corresponding to that time, and he speaks it, and since it is a creative word, then God creates what he promised for that time. Therefore, it is a creative a, a work of divine creation, which God has been doing from one age to another, constructing his church, creating the spiritual temple for God to dwell in, in all his fullness, both in the spiritual temple of the church of the religious Christ and also in the individuals, because God dwells in all his fullness in each believer in Christ of each time in the church of the religious Christ. When we are transformed, then there will be the fullness of God in you and in me as well. Now, we have seen that all these great promises correspond to this end time in the work which Christ will be doing in this end time after the seven church ages. Uh, why is it not made known openly? that it is going to come another time after the minister of the Reverend William Branham, making it open. Uh, it wasn't made openly, but it was spoken prophetically of what would come. Now, would there come another age, the age of the cornerstone? Let's see if he said something about the coming of the age of the cornerstone. On page 9, paragraph 34, he says, Now notice, then the coming of the Lord Jesus is so close at hand until the Spirit from way down in here, just barely justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Spirit. In other words, he says that down here, in the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit, in the church from the day of Pentecost, and has been calling and gathering all the elect of God in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit has been moving from age to age and from messenger of each age and has come coming up from each stage to another to call the people, the elect of that stage. And later, when the work of those stages is done, uh, then what is there after the seven ages? Then we come to the age of the cornerstone. There was a bridge here where the Holy Spirit was taken out of the seventh age when they rejected the river William Branham. And they remained outside of the seventh age and did not enter the age of the cornerstone. Uh, on page 34, 38, paragraph 210, in the message providing his word, he says he proves all of his words, all of his words, just think of it, all of his words, and you were his word, 
He was the word, and we are part of his word. And that's the reason you are sent there to confirm your place in life. I don't think you got that, see? He is the word. Now you get it. He was in the feet in Luther, in the thighs in Wizri, in the shoulders in Pentecost. See what I mean? He is the head. You have a part that joins that together. This hour that we are living now, not the feet part, not the thigh part, not the shoulder part, but the neck part is the one who says it. And the only one who can be identified as the part of the neck after the seven, the seven uh, church age, this part where the spirit was in the Reverend William Burnham, doing the work after the doors were closed to him, to the uh, majority of the churches of the seventh age. And therefore the Holy Spirit Christ was outside, knocking on the door. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 to 21. But now, he says, come up hither, the stage of the cornerstone, the age of love divine, not, not uh, agape love, but love, but love divine. To make known all these things should happen soon. He continues saying, Let's see on page, uh, on page 9 to 10. Now notice then the coming of the Lord. Jesus is so close at hand until the Spirit from way down in here just bear a justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Spirit and now right into the time of the coming of the headstone. The church has got to be so perfect like Christ until Christ and the church can unite together the same spirit. And if the spirit of Christ is in you, it makes you live the life of Christ. Act the life of Christ, do the works of Christ. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also do. Just said that, see? Now we are going to have, we got a ministry coming. That's just exactly like the life of Christ. What does that ministry identify? The coming, the coming of the Lord. Look at the Lutheran Church under justification, coming just so fleshly from Catholicism. Look at it moving. Then look at Wesley coming a little closer into sanctification, weaving into the scriptures. Look at right in between the Wesley. Then the next thing come in was the Pentecostal age. And the Pentecostal age with the restoration of gifts, the spiritual gifts. Now look at the age coming now right up to the headstone. He said that an age would come, the age, the age of the cornerstone, there it is. See what I mean? The coming of the Lord, the made known God in all creation is waiting for the church to positionally find its place. And the church has to find her place in the mystical body of Christ, in her place today, which is the age of the cornerstone. The age where it was said that he would come, which said that, which, which he said that he, that age would come. Now we can see that that is the place where the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ will be young, and each member will become a youth because we will be transformed. We who are living we shall be transformed, and the dead in Christ will be resurrected in eternal uh, glorified bodies. There's a passage, uh, there's a passage here where it says that when the church recognizes her position, then the rapture will come. Novecientos 
Vamos a buscarlo aquí en el... Let's look for it here. Esto corresponde a la página On page 107, 68, párrafo 930, paragraph 240, in the message Christ, the mystery of God revealed, the new birth is Christ, the revelation God has revealed to you this great mystery, and that's a new birth. Now, what are you going to do when you get all that group together, where the revelation is perfectly in harmony? In other words, the revelation will be perfectly in harmony, or will believe the same thing. Therefore, there will not be a one head this side saying, I understand, I, I believe that this is so. Another one on this other side says, no, may I don't believe so. That is not a, a harmonious revelation. It's not a revelation in one, in a united form. In other words, it's not a revelation in harmony, but that is a revelation which has discord one with another. Just like the theologians, some explain things in one way and others explain them in another way. There is no harmony. But the church he says, now what are you going to do when you get all that group together? Where the revelation is perfect, perfectly in harmony and God expressing it through His Word. Through His promised Word, make known to open to us the Word, revealing to us His Word. And God expressing it through His Word by the same actions, the same thing that He did, making the Word manifest. That is fulfilling what is promised for our time. And now, we have seen that Christ is going to confront the enemy in the corresponding time. And with the bright shining of his coming, it says that he will overcome the enemy, who is the Antichrist, the man of sin. And now, we can see that all this is under the seventh seal. Because all these things correspond to the time after the seven church ages. The fourth seal corresponds to the time after the seven church ages. That is a, a, a seal which was pre-preached. It talks about what will happen after the seven church ages. And in the fifth seal, where the souls are under the altar, those, are, those of the Hebrews, the martyrs, they cry for vigils, and they are told that they should wait a little time. And vistas uh, are given unto them, robes are given unto them, because when they make that cry, the dispensation of grace has not ended. So they are told to wait a little time until their number is finished, which is finished with the 144,000 Hebrews who will be martyred with them. Later, the 144,000 are the ones who will resurrect to be in the Millennial Kingdom, to resurrect after the Great Tribulation. Now, all that is under the seventh seal. Who are the 144,000 uh, thousand Hebrews who are under the seventh seal? Let's see what the Reverend William Branham says on page 23. On page 20, in the message, the Feast of Trumpets says, Under the seventh trumpet is to Israel the same as the seventh seal was to the church. You see? The same 
uh, the seventh seal for the church, the same as the seventh trumpet, the seventh trumpet for, the, for Israel. And what is the seventh trumpet? Moses and Elijah, the, the two olive trees. The seventh trumpet of Revelation 11, 15 and onwards. That is why that seventh trumpet appears in Revelation chapter 1, chapter 11, because the ministry of the two olive trees corresponds to uh, chapter 11 of Revelation. Let's see another place. On page, on page 35, paragraph 270, the Epistle of Trumpets, it says, uh, in English, on paragraph 270, he says, Now, as soon as this church is drawn, is drawn together, she is shaken up, and that mystery of the seventh seal, or the seventh seal, the mystery of going, and the Jews is called by the, by the mystery of the seventh trumpet, which is the two prophets, Elijah and Moses. The seventh trumpet is the coming of the Lord, the seventh seal. Now on page, uh, on page 13 in the book, Block and Systems, or in the book of quotations on paragraph 158, he says, remember that they which are alive and remain shall not hinder those which are, which are sleeping. For the trump of God, that last trumpet, the sixth one has just sounded, and that last trumpet, like the last seal, will be the coming of the Lord. It shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now you notice the seventh trumpet, which sounds, uh, which Moses and Elijah sound, the seventh trumpet, which are the, Moses, the, the ministry of Moses and Elijah, bring the gospel of the kingdom, of the great voice of trumpet, with the final trumpet. In other words, it can't be under the trumpet of the first angel messenger, that Christ would resurrect the believers in him. Those who died and transformed the believers who are alive, and it can't even be the second trumpet under the ministry of the second angel messenger, not even the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, or even the seventh, in the seventh age, no, but in the seventh trumpet of Revelation 11, 15 and onwards, which is under the ministry of the two olive trees, sounding the trumpet of the gospel of the kingdom, and calling and gathering all the elect of God, first the elect of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and later the elect of the Hebrew people. Uh, that is why that great voice of trumpet uh, with which the, the, the angels of the Son of Man come with to call and gather all the elect it is under the seventh seal for the church which is the seventh trumpet for the Hebrew people Moses and Elijah for the Hebrew people and the coming of the Lord for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ because the Son of Man comes with his angels the ministry of Christ for the last day in the midst of, the, of his church comes with the ministries of Moses and Elijah. Now, we have seen that the work which Jesus Christ will be doing after the seven church ages was under the seventh seal. And under the seventh seal is the fourth seal. And also is the final part of the fifth seal, which are the 144,000 Hebrews who will be called and, and they are also in the sixth seal. Those are Moses and Elijah calling and gathering the erect among the Hebrews. Everything is under the mystery of the seventh seal. And everything that Christ has been doing after the ministry of our brother Branham and his departure, everything that he has been doing in the stage of the age of the cornerstone is under the seventh seal. Just like in each age, 
what Christ did through the Holy Spirit, which he did through each angel messenger, is under a some seal of the seven seals. But you notice, it's not the things which he did in the seven, after the seven ages are not under the fourth seal, not even the last part of the fifth seal, not even uh, in the sixth seal, even the seventh seal, but under the previous seals, a seal can cover one, two or three edges in the seven stages of the church. And when uh, it was made known in the edges, the Spirit of God made known to Brother Branham under those seals, the things which Christ did in the ages and the things which would happen in the seven ages and under those seals corresponding to the seven ages from one to third. All that corresponds to the seven church ages. Now, the work that Jesus Christ will be doing after the seven, uh, seven church ages, you notice, is under these seals, the fourth seal to the seventh. And all these seals, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth, they are under and in the seventh seal. Therefore, all that is pointed here for this end time, that is what Christ will be doing under the seventh seal. Therefore, everything that Christ would be doing after the seven ages would be identified in the Bible because God cannot do any other thing apart from what he has promised that he will do after the seven ages. Everything is in the prophecies of the Old Testament and in the New Testament. In the book of Revelation is everything contained in symbols. But it will be decoded. That is in uh, the computer terms here. And be decoded. Like when you have a computer which contains uh, many things. That is the Bible. You can say in that computer I have all this written in there. I have everything there. I have this thing, this, the other, and everything is a secret because you have not shown anyone what you have in there. But if you leave your computer there and someone else comes, let me see what he has in, in here. Let's, let's find out his secrets. He says, you, but you told me you have some stuff here. I tried looking for them. I could not see anything. Uh, because you don't have the, the key, the password. It is under a password. Thus, everything is sealed under those seven seals. Therefore, the only one who knows the key is Christ, the Holy Spirit. Because just like no one knows the things of man, but the Spirit that is in man, no one knows the things of God, but the Spirit of God. Therefore, the Spirit of God is the one which can uh, decode. The only one who can decode everything that is uh, coded in the book of Revelation. And with the decoding of all that that is in the book of Revelation, the whole Bible remains decoded. Because the Bible has everything coded 
and everything goes on uh, coming to pass gradually goes on being fulfilled but how can this the holy spirit decode the things and make known them to us it is simple for this end time it is the easiest time how did the message of each age how was it decoded he sent a messenger and the messenger decoded the message to the people and how is it done today in the same way he did it in other times it has to be the Holy Spirit. It can't be a man. Because a man does not have the capacity to do that. It has to be the Holy Spirit who knows the things of God. In the book of Sales, it says, Glory notice. And when this Holy Spirit that we have becomes incarnate to us, the one that is in our midst in the form of the Holy Ghost becomes incarnate to us in the person of Jesus Christ, we will crown him King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That is the only one who can decode what Christ is would be doing after the seven church ages. On page 168 in the book of the Seals, it tells us something and says, at the end of the last paragraph, it says, And at the same time that, the dev that this devil falls out of heaven and becomes incarnate in a man, the Holy Spirit goes up and comes down in incarnate men. If we, if we find that man in whom the Holy Spirit will be, uh, we have found the one who can decode the book of Revelation and the entire Bible, who can teach us all the Revelation. We can come bring all the prophecies identified in the work of Christ promised to be done after the seven church ages. And why will he be on earth decoding to us all these mysteries? In page uh, 75, he says, and just about the time the Antichrist moves his self on the scene, God moves his self on the scene to redeem it all. He comes to bring us the faith to be transformed and taken with Christ to the mighty of the Lamb. It is to redeem us, to give us the redemption, the physical redemption of the body, which is our transformation. That is the way in which he will give us the faith for rapture the revelation to be transformed and to be taken with Christ the marriage of the Lamb in heaven. Now that will be the same form in which he will give us the faith he will have given us the faith to receive the forgiveness of our sins to be cleansed with the blood of Christ and to be placed in water in his name and to receive the Holy Spirit and to obtain the new birth and to receive that transformation the internal transformation in order to uh, to be taken to the kingdom of Christ, to be born in the kingdom of Christ, to be put in the heavenly places with Christ our Savior, and now to be taken with Christ physically and to be uh, taken in the seventh dimension, the heaven in the house of our heavenly Father. There comes faith for that rapture and transformation. That's like the faith to receive transformation and to be taken with Christ to His kingdom. In train with Christ, that revelation which returns around the first coming of Christ. Now, to have that revelation and to believe, well, we have the faith to receive that transformation, that spiritual transformation, to receive the forgiveness of our sins, and to be placed in His name, to receive the Holy Spirit and to obtain the new birth, and to be born in the kingdom of Christ, and to be born in the sixth dimension. Now you notice we, we rise up, we are raptured to that spiritual dimension, but now comes a rapture in a physical transformation in order to be taken with Christ to, this, to the seventh dimension, in other words, to a higher dimension. And that faith of rapture, that revelation to be transformed and rapture rotates around the second coming of Christ. It rotates around the seventh seal. 
Therefore, just like in each stage or each age was fulfilled, each of those first, se- first three seals, no one knew anything of what was happening, but under those seals was the calling and gathering of all his elect during the seven ages of the church. The devil brought war. He tried to stop the work of God of the seven, stage, uh, seven church ages. That is why our brother Branham was told that the seventh seal he should not say anything. So that, uh, why? So that the enemy does not make damage, does not bring imitations, and he could not harm, make a greater harm to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And consequently, everything that was under the seventh seal, everything would come in its own appointed time. Therefore, the work of Jesus Christ after the seven stages of the church is under the seventh seal. You notice what uh, the Reverend William Abraham tells us here on page 477 in the book of the Revelation of Seals in the seventh seal. That shows it's from God, for see, it fits exactly in the promises of God from the end of the message, from the message of the end time. That is why we had stopped, but now we have returned. I could not explain how we have come back here, but... The Spirit of Christ, the one which has brought us back where we had stopped. Notice now for the end of time message, this seal, which is the message of the end of time, which the Reverend William Branham said that what he was talking about was only putting a foundation, putting a foundation for a message that would sweep the nation. In other words, the message of the end. And the message of the end, he says that it is that seal, the seventh seal. The seventh seal is the coming of the Lord. Therefore, the message of the end is the message of the second coming of Christ. It is the message of the gospel of the kingdom, which rotates around the second coming of Christ. And it is also the latter reign the teaching of the second coming of Christ as the land of the tribe of Judah, as king of kings and lord of lords in his reclaiming work. Notice well for the end of time message, this seal. After all, he has revealed all the six seals, but he don't say nothing about the seven. And the end time seal, when it starts, will be absolutely a total secret according to the Bible. In other words, the seventh seal uh, it has a beginning, just like under different seals, the, there is a work that God does. Everything has a beginning and the end. Before knowing that, and remember, Revelation 10, 1 to 7, uh, at the end of the seventh angel's message, all the messages of God would be known. We are at the end time, the opening of the seventh seal. When John the Baptist was on earth, uh, having begun his ministry, at about 29 years, the seventh seal of that time, which was the coming of Christ, was in the midst. He was born in Bethlehem of Judea. He went to Egypt temporarily, and later on he returned to the land of Israel in Nazareth, where he grew from in the seventh seal, the coming of the Lord, for the first coming of Christ was there in the midst of the Hebrew people. And John was also there, and he was growing, but he was in another territory. And the people did not see the beginning of the first coming of Christ in the midst of the Hebrew people. Though there were some people who even before he appeared, before being born in Bethlehem of Judea, they already knew. They already knew that 
He would be in the womb of Mary and would be born through a virgin Mary. Uh, that one, Mary and Joseph knew it because the angel revealed it unto them and even told them the name. And later, Elizabeth knew it and the priest Zacharias because when the angel Gabriel appeared to the prophet, uh, the priest Zachariah, he was told that the child that Zachariah would have with his wife Elizabeth would have to run to prepare the coming of the Lord. He's the one who would turn the heart of the fathers to the children. In other words, the Hebrews under the law to the Christian faith. And he would come before the Lord preparing the people. He did not say through whom that child would come, that me, the, the, the Messiah. He only talked about where the forerunner would come from. He said, he would come through your wife Elizabeth. In other words, when you go uh, be with her, she will conceive. Though she was old, though he was old and his wife was advanced in age, he was barren, but there anything impossible with God? There's nothing. And when he, he remembered that Abraham and Sarah had been like that, they were old, but God rejuvenated them. So God has to fulfill his promise. When he makes a promise, he knows how he will fulfill it. Therefore, it doesn't matter the problems which come. The person through whom Christ is going to fulfill those promises, he will fulfill them because he promised it. Now you notice, you see, Moses had the problems which he had, but through Moses, God was going to fulfill that promise. You notice, even up to taking him to the house of Pharaoh, and he adopted him as a, a son. And since he adopted him as a son, he had the rights of a child in that house. He was a heir to the daughter of Pharaoh. And as a lady, you notice, she was the heiress to the throne. Now, we don't know if it would be, if there would be a, a female pharaoh, a queen, but you notice the right went to Moses. So therefore, Moses was in a good position, but he preferred the sufferings of Christ than having uh, riches which are temporary. The best is Christ because he is eternal and everything that he has is eternal. The earthly things, we have them, but at any moment we can lose them and we can't even take the earthly things because when we are ruptured, when we are transformed, we are not going to say that the car which I have, I want to take it. Or oh, my chicken. Or oh, my cows. None of that. Can you go with? Everything will remain here. Though, there is something very important in the program of God for the messengers. I don't know if it is also applied to people or the other ministers. Our brother Branham saw his host there. And he also saw his dog. <coughs> but their body had died. The animals have no soul, but they have a spirit. Now, for that reason, we're not going to have so many dogs and so many horses and, and cows to say that we are going to the millennium and we shall have our animals. Uh, that is not ours to do. If God 
give some messengers some of the animals which they had on earth well that is a matter of God uh, myself because our brother Branham had a horse and a dog there and later they appeared there well I'm not going to say uh, let me have some horse, some, some horses so that I will have it there or maybe some dogs I'm not thinking in that way but instead I want to have much more sheep but the human sheep in the kingdom of Christ because those are the ones which vary much not the many animals we have there but how many people you com we converted under uh, our ministry now we have seen Jesus Christ working after the seven ages of the church that is our topic how we have seen Jesus Christ working in the seven ages of the church through a man in each age that is the way in which God has worked in each age and that is the way promised that he would work in our time and thus as the work of Christ was identified in each age and was vindicated was vindicated and let alone with the opening of the seals, uh, Brother Branham made known everything that happened in each of the past ages. He identified the work of Christ, the Holy Spirit in each age in the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ during the seven stages of the Church. And every clear picture with what was promised in the scripture for the seven ages. And everything that Christ will be doing after the seven ages has to be in a clear picture with what was promised in the scripture. It has to match with all the prophecies corresponding to the end time and everything that Christ in the Holy Spirit prophesied through the Reverend William Branham. It has to come in the same way, in the same line of thinking, divine thought and prophetic thought from Genesis to Revelation and it has to be in agreement with all the types and figures which speak about this end time. You notice on page 82, page 242 in the book of Church Ages, as you have stated, Jesus identifies himself with the messenger of each age. It is the messenger of each age who identifies Christ. Christ veiled and revealed in him. They receive from him the revelation of the word for each period. The message does not come through any person, it comes through the messenger corresponding to each time. Because every revelation has to come through a messenger, through a prophet. Because the word of God comes unto them, comes to them. The word revelation brings the elect of God out of the world and unto full union with Jesus Christ. You notice the way in which Christ is calling and gathering his elect in his church, in his miscobod of Christ, in his mosque, in his miscobod of believers. Christ in Holy Spirit in each messenger, opening to him the revelation corresponding to that time, and that messenger proclaims that revelation through the Holy Spirit, and with that message they are called and gathered, the elect of God in each time. Christ told Paul speak the word I have many people in this city and you notice in him was the word revealed there was the Holy Spirit working through him Paul would say I don't live on my own but Christ in me he was Christ doing the work in that age and now you notice how Christ puts in his mystical body of believers the erect in each age through his manifestation in the Holy Spirit in the messenger of each age. Therefore, it is not a human work, but the work is a divine work which Christ does through his Holy Spirit in the messenger corresponding to each age. These messengers are called stars because they shine with a broad light or reflected light of the sun, even Jesus. They are also called stars because they are holders of light at night. Thus, in the darkness of sin, they bring the light of God to his people.
Now you notice they are called they are called stars because they come with a borrowed light or reflected light. All stars reflect light of the bright and morning star from Christ. Now we can see that every star has a reflection manifested to Christ the bright and morning star. Therefore, through those messengers, Christ uh, reflects himself in each age. They are stars because Christ, the bright and morning star, reflects himself through them. And now, veamos Let's see another place. Here on page 242, he says, If ever a people needed a promise embracing the land where there is no light, it was the people of the dark ages. And that is why the Spirit is promising them the morning star. He is telling them that the chief star, even Jesus, who dwelleth in the light unto which no man can approach, will in the future kingdom illuminate them by his own personal presence. He will not be using the stars, messengers, to give light in darkness any longer. He will no longer be using uh, uh, any of the seven church age messengers but he will be himself. It will be Jesus himself speaking to them face to face as Jesus shares his kingdom with them. It is the morning star that is visible when the light of the sun commences to shine. When our son, Jesus, comes, there will be no further need of messengers. He will bring us his message of cheer himself, and as he rules his kingdom and we live in his presence, the light of the word will become brighter and brighter in, in our perfect day. And our perfect day is the age of the cornerstone. And as the kingdom is the millennial kingdom, what else could we desire above Jesus himself? Is he not everything, even perfect everything? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen. Even so, Lord God, thy Spirit, let us hear thy, thy truth. Remember that it has been the Holy Spirit from age to age, and even in our time it has to be the Holy Spirit. <coughs> it has to be according to the prophets. He will, ma he will manifest himself through human flesh in order to speak to his church. Because for the Holy Spirit to speak to his, church, to his people, he, he has to have a veil of flesh. This is showed to us in Zachariah, Chapter 7, verse 11. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Yeah, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts hath sent in the spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. And in Nehemiah, there we also have lugar. we have a place in Nehemiah chapter 9. Verse 8. Verse 9, chapter 9. Verse 20 up to around 30. Let's see. Thou givest also thy good spirit to instruct them. 
who el instructs the Hebrew people the Holy Spirit and also in Zachariah we so we read it thou gavest also thy good spirit to instruct them and withheld this not thy manna from thy mouth from their mouth and gavest them water for their thirst on verse 30 he says Yet many years didst thou forbear them and testifiedest against them by thy spirit in thy prophets. Yet would they not give ear, therefore givest thou them into the, into the hand of the people of the land. Now you see he spoke through the prophets. The, the, the Holy Spirit already speaks through the prophets. Sent from age to age. Capítulo Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 speaking about this same thing St. Paul says uh, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 God who had sundry times and in diver manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. You see, he spoke through the prophets. That in these last days spoke unto us by his Son. In other words, God through the Holy Spirit spoke through Jesus, whom he hath appointed here of all things. Without Jesus Christ being the head of everything, no one has anything. Jesus Christ has everything. Any person can say, no, I have something. No, you also belong to Christ. Everything belongs to him, the whole world and its fullness. And everything that is in, he, in, in the world. He is the judge of the living and of the dead. To him he hath appointed here of all things. In other words, the entire creation. Because through him God created everything. And by whom also he made the, the world. Because through Jesus Christ he made the universe. Jesus Christ in his angelic body called the angel of the Lord through the angelic body of God which is the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ in his angelic body God created all things he spoke through his angel the angel of the Lord who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person you see Jesus Christ in his angelic body is the, is the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high and now, we find that in the throne of God, Christ, uh, we find that Christ sat in the throne of God. He sat at the right hand of the majesty, and he put there his own blood to intercede for all of us. That is the throne of intercession. While there is blood in the throne of intercession, in the mercy seat, there is mercy for the human beings. When Christ leaves the throne, when he has finished his church, there will be no more blood in the throne, and consequently, that heavenly throne, uh, divine judgment will come from there, being spoken by God for the human race. That is why the Reverend William Branham says that when Christ leaves the, the throne of the Father, for humanity, it will be a terrible time. That is, there are no words in the alphabet to express how terrible and sad it will be for humanity from there and onwards. But there will not also be words in the alphabet to express the blessings and the glories for the elect of God. Therefore, for some, it will be of a curse and judgment because there will be no more blood in the heavenly throne, but others it will be for a blessing. Jesus Christ working after the seven ages of the church. That has been our topic. And you have seen how he worked in the past and how he is working in the present. 
everything is under the seventh seal. The work after the seven edges of the church. May the blessings of Christ and of the covenant be upon all of you and upon me and help all of us be collaborators of Jesus Christ in the work of Jesus Christ after the seven ages of the church. And I will report before Christ and say, Here I am, I'm present, use me according to your will in your work after the seven church ages. And the Lord Jesus Christ, may he use each of your ministers and collaborators who are here present, and also those who will hear this conference through this video, and those who will read it in the books, and use them greatly, and me as well, in, in your work after the seven church ages. And Lord, may your message move throughout Latin America, North America, Europe, and the entire world until it reaches the Hebrew people, and so that all the elect of the church are gathered and later on reach the Hebrew people. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray to whom be the glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for your kind attention, ministers, collaborators, in the mystical body of Christ in the age of the cornerstone. And may God use you greatly in his work in this end time. And may he continue adding more workers and send more workers to his work. His work after the seven ages, seven church ages because there is much work in his work. When we have traveled and we have had activities or services, we can see that God has much more people in Latin America and Caribbean and also in Africa, and we don't know in how many more countries. Therefore, may God send more workers to his work, the work after the seven church edges. We see that Miguel, when he goes to a territory with some videos, with the videos, and you notice how God has worked. Why? Because in that spoken word is the power to do the work which corresponds to the work after the seven church ages. In that word is the power and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uses that word. And there are no barriers for that word. In Africa, uh, Tirzo and Gian of Colto and Miguel, they have been going there and some other ministers. And you notice there are not even barriers also, though the language is not the same. It is the word which has no barriers. The word of Christ which comes after the seven church ages. And that is the word of the gospel of the kingdom. Together with the word of the gospel of grace, both reigns coming at the same time upon the church of Jesus Christ in the age of the cornerstone. The age of the cornerstone does not belong to any of the seven church ages. It is an eternal age. And he has been materializing with human beings. Uh, he has been materializing it with human beings in this end time. That is the edge of the most holy place in the spiritual temple. It is the edge which fulfills the year of Jubilee. It is the edge to which the church is called to rise in order to have her Jubilee. Her Jubilee of the 50th year materialized in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the jubilee of the church rising higher in the seventh, uh, higher than the seventh edge, higher in the edge of the cornerstone. So therefore, we cannot remain down. We have to go up in the edge of the cornerstone.
the age where Jesus Christ is working after what he did in the seven in the seven church ages. After the work of the seven ages, now comes the work of Jesus Christ for the age of the cornerstone. And that work is moving in Latin America and Caribbean in the West. Therefore, all the work that Christ does after the seven church ages, he does it where? In the age of the cornerstone. With a message. A messenger and a people who in their majority, they are Latin American and Caribbean. It has to be in the West, which and from there it extends to other nations, to other countries, other continents. Because the White Horse Rider of Revelation 19 is the same White Horse Rider, which the Reverend William Branham says that from the West comes the, horse, the White Horse Rider. You see, it has to be a man from the West. It cannot be from the seventh age or the first age because those ages already ended. It has to be in the age of the cornerstone. In an eternal age where the work of Christ after the seven ages is carried out. Well, this was Miguel's dessert because Miguel always asks for dessert. Whenever, you, whenever he eats physically for the physical food, he asks for dessert. And also in the spiritual food, he always, he always holds on for, for dessert. And now, well, almost it's our custom, the spiritual dessert too. Uh, there was the dessert for Miguel. God bless you, God bless you, Herberto. God bless you, Jose Benjamin. And bless each one of you. God bless you, uh, Julio, also. And use you greatly in his work, in, in the work after the seven church ages. We do not work for any of the seven church ages. We work for an eternal age, the age of the cornerstone, for the work which is after the seven church ages, which is a privilege for us to work in that work as it was a privilege for those ministers and collaborators who worked together with the messenger of each age in the time in which they were in force. Now we have uh, an age in force, the age of the cornerstone. The rest already ended. And the labor of the rest of the ages ended. The spirit has moved higher in the age of the cornerstone, where the work is carried out, the work that comes after the seven church ages. The Lord Jesus Christ working after the seven church ages. Jesus Christ working through his Holy Spirit after the seven church ages. Ages. From age to age, when the Holy Spirit moved, uh, another age came, and then the people of the past age lost the Holy Spirit. They did not, they did not know where it flew, but it came in another messenger. And later in the seventh age, where the Reverend William Branham was and was used, when but Abraham finished, the, many don't know where it went. But for us, we know he's carrying out the work which comes after the seven church ages. And that is not, and that is in the West, in the West, in Latin America and Caribbean, because in the northern part he carried out the seventh age. And now he's carrying out the work of the age of the cornerstone. That is why, even if you speak in a simple way, when you speak the word corresponding to our time, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit backs up that word. And that is why anyone can say, but how is it possible that such a simple message being preached, just like of an hour, or maybe two hours, or even, or even 15 minutes, an altar call is, is made and so many people come, because Jesus Christ is working after the seven church ages. It is the work, not a human work, but of Jesus Christ, working after the seven church ages. The Lord Jesus Christ working after the seven church ages.